Hello, my name is Fred van Dijk. In this presentation for World Plow Day 2022, I want to talk about the add-on Collective Export Import and give a short demonstration on how to use it. I live in the Netherlands, in Rotterdam, and I work for Zest, where I support and have been working on many different plowing websites for our customers for the last 15 years. So, what is Collective Export Import? It's an add-on you can install in your plowing site, and it allows you to export your content and then import that same content again in another plowing website. The intermediate storage format is JSON, and it was initially started to migrate plowing websites from an earlier version to a newer version. It was created by Philip Bauer in around February 2021. In something more than a year, the add-on has grown and has been uh, tested and used and extended by a lot of community members to migrate Plone websites to newer Plone versions like Plone 5.2 and the upcoming Plone version, Plone 6. I get rather nervous from sitting on myself and talking alone into a webcam, so I prepared a short demonstration. Let's quickly go into that first, so I can show you how I can migrate a demo content website from Plone 4 to the upcoming Plone 6 version, which is now available in the Alpha 4. So this is the Plone 6 uh, site in which we're going to migrate the data. I have created a Plone 4 site, which is Plone 4 3.20. It's still running on Python 2.7. And using the add-on collective lorem ipsum, I have created some dummy content in here. So I have about four or five folders with an extra images folder, which contains some dummy images that have been used in documents. So this is the folder. I've switched this folder to a tabular view, the next folder contains other content. I've uh, populated with almost all different content types with some collections, news items, events. You can see them here activated in the portlets. And that's about it. A, an older Plone 4 website with some default content. So the first thing you need to do is to install the add-on into your source Plone website. The add-on doesn't need to be installed, which means that you don't have to go to the control panel and try to install it from the add-ons. But you do need to have it installed on the file system and the add-on needs to be available when the site starts up. When the site starts up, then for admin users, there will be a view available, which is called export li yeah. lying, <laughs> lying dash, <laughs> liggen streepje in Dutch, export dash content. And this is the main export content view in which you can select uh, what to do. If you might have been using export, uh, collective export import before or looked at it a bit earlier last year, there are some notable improvements. The first of which is that the content types to export will now be exported in one file and the file uh, takes into consideration the exact order it needs so that a uh, Content tree with both folderish and non-folderish items can be restored in one go. There's a bit of a chicken and egg problem here that if you would export a file or a normal page first before the folder in which it is stored, then on importing the, uh, uh, the content again, then that item cannot be created because the folder doesn't exist yet. So it tries to be smart and tries to reverse export all content so that it then can be recreated again in the target plone site in one go. So let's do that. I've got this text export website. I'll do unlimited depth. And for now, I will include the blobs inside the JSON. This is not advisable for larger databases. Then there's, a, there's another trick for that, which has been added last year. But I will for now store the, the, the few images and random file data that's in there that has been generated by Collective Lorem Ipsum. And I will download it to my local machine. Export. And as you can see, oh, wait, I should choose select all none. Export, yes, download to local machine export and there we go and it's only about 328 kilobytes so let's inspect what just has happened i've exported a file it is stored in my downloads here and let's inspect it with a text editor and see what's in there so as you can see this is json it's all json from top to bottom it stores the id here first which is indeed the copy of front page 
and then it continues, continues, continues. And there's all kinds of data here that you will recognize if you look at the content, modified parent data, and all kinds of fields. So this is the first step. Let's go back to our export or content view. The first step you need to do is to have the file contents there because otherwise we can run into a chicken and egg problem when the content is not there and you try to uh, also restore later metadata. And this is the interesting thing about export import. It's rather low level. You need to understand a bit what's going on, but if you do under, if you know the right order, it's rather transparent and you can also uh, pause resume fix something and continue then uh, you're doing your migration so what the, is there else there's also this is what we've done export content but this is not the only thing there's also a lot of metadata on that content for example you can set relations between items when you make something a related item um, there's uh, for example on folders there's a default page and now let's let's go there export default page not talk too much export default pages and you will see there's now a file here extra let's look it up again here and what you'll see here is that in my dummy content site there were actually three content items that have a default page set and export import works by storing the UUID and then um, registering the extra metadata that's needed for that. Every content item in Plone gets assigned a unique UUID and by using this UUID and storing all the extra metadata in our JSON files on import we can safely first import the content structure and then apply all the extra metadata again on the items that can be found by the UUID that's both in here but is for example, well let's try it um, UUID this one, copy, go to the text import, search, and yeah, there it is. So this is the content item that the default page, this one, refers to. So test collection is the default page set on this content item. So that's enough talking about why why let's quickly continue and export more stuff export content we did that export relations export relations there's my relations file Tra we don't have translations it's english only today let's try and export members i don't think there's that much in there oh there's a few members okay local roles also very important because those are also the ownership uh, fields are set there default pages we already did that then another chicken and egg one is the object positions in parent export ordering and there it is because you cannot order stuff if the items themselves are not there yet comments i didn't create any comments there's a new feature uh, added last at the end of last year or beginning this year i think by philip export portlets it's not picking up the site route yet but we can at least demonstrate it's exporting something that's a small bug there and let's, this was also added this year, export redirects, which is the redirection tool. When you move around content in Plone, then Plone stores the previous location. And if somebody comes in the URL at the old location, it will get automatically redirected to the new location. So let's see what we've collected by now. We've got our content. We've got the relations between items. We've got the redirects. Is already some editing I did uh, to prepare the demo content. There are two portlets now. We have a lot of ordering. There are only three groups, which are the default groups, and I didn't create any extra users yet. Could have done that, but it works. Local roles. This is assignment of all the owners on all the different content, and I didn't do any sharing or other stuff. Uh, so this is the plain default one from creating a plone site and i already discussed the default pages okay so that's our exported content for now let's go to the new plone site and create a new plone site this step is of course not automated this is what you have to do manually you have to prepare and set the plone site before and you have to especially pay attention to the language i will first now switch the language back to english 
without language variation. So this is uh, uh, just en, I think. Uh, but identifier, let's do this. Let, let's call the site lorem ipsum because that's most of the content. Yeah, let's go to the Netherlands, doesn't matter. Create blown site. So here's our blown site. Plain default and it's No, sorry, wrong one. Site setup. We're on plan 6 alpha 4. Okay, we'll go to the site route and we'll do import content. And the first thing we need to do is set up our structure, is set up the content itself so that we can later load uh, the extra metadata on it. Browse, desktop downloads, where are you? Yeah, and we'll go to text export, open it. Um, this is also something new that has been added. I can't remember exactly when. I think it was the end of last year. Uh, I think also uh, started by and built by Philip. Uh, it allows you to replace, update or ignore existing content. Before this, um, Export input used to be a one-trick pony, and once the content was there, you would get all kinds of conflict if you tried to reapply again. Now there's a feature where you can say, look, just replace if you find something with the same ID, or try to update it, or ignore and create with a new ID. I think this was the previous behavior, as if there was already something in there. Okay, let's import. And there we are, imported 45 items in one second. And as you can see, there's already some stuff here. And this is all my main content. There's still some funny thing here with the default item that is, has a plone logo now, I think, or I don't know where this comes from. But as you can see, there's still my stuff in here. Ah, there's still the default one. The default content that has been created for Plone 6. Okay, so that's part one. I'll just throw these away because I didn't have them in the previous site as well. Yes. And there's already one funny thing that, that I was stuck like, why doesn't this work? This is still the old, the default Plone website. Why wasn't it, why wasn't it imported again? Because this is Plone 6, and with Plone 6 we've got a new dexterity site root object for the main Plone website. Ah, here's another interesting mistake I made. I created the wrong Plone 6 website. Let's backtrack a bit. Let's go here. I created a Plone site with create a new Plone site. In Plone 6, this button by default will set up a Plone site that is uh, uh, suited for the new Plone front end. Volto. If you want to create a classic Plone 6 website, for example, because you want to migrate uh, an older Plone site, but you want to stick to the classic UI, you should press this button, create a classic Plone site. So let's backtrack and quickly remove my site. Lorem Ipsum, there you go. Go back and now create a classic Plone website. I will still call it Lorem Ipsum again. Yep. Site is okay. Language should go to English. And let's keep that to Amsterdam. Create Plone Site. And now when I edit, I get my text here. And I didn't see that previously because it was already storing the uh, default plan content in the new blocks layout and not the old rich text available layout. Okay, so now my site seems a bit more ready to import. Quickly drop these again. Delete, yes, we'll go to the import content view and we'll do the same trick again. Test export, open. That's fine, fine, fine. Oh, there's also this. If you have an extremely large database, you can now say uh, uh, each 500 uh, items do uh, uh, an, an intermediate commit, but that's not necessary now. Just import, and there we are again with 45 items in uh, two seconds. And if I look at the contents again, there we are, and we have the same contents, 
But when I now go to my main plant site, oh, it's still the default plant content that was created when I created the website. But now I can show you why, because the plant site is now a dexterity site root object, and it has now the data stored in here. In the old plone for website, it was contents and it was a default item. Let's continue because I can now show the next step. We've got all our data in here and what we now want to do is to apply the metadata. Input content. So what we can now do is go to the imports and for example go to the default pages. Where are you? Here, import default pages, browse. I select my default pages, open, and I import. And as you can see, it has changed three default pages. So now when I go to the home page, ah, and there's my new home page, because what it has just done is with the import, it has set the display on the item welcome to plone, which is the item that was imported from the plone 4 website. So now we're back into business again, but as you can see, Export import supports moving the content, but there might still be some details where you have to think a bit because, for example, functionality or features in Plone have changed over the versions. Let's quickly continue and move to the next items we can import. Import content. And what do we else have here? We've got our local roles, members, ordering, portlets, redirects. Okay, let's do that. Import relations, browse, relations, open, import. Translations, we don't have that. Members, we don't need to import the members because it were only the groups. Uh, local roles, we need to do those. Browse and have that. I said local roles, open and import. So all the owners are set. Uh, let's see, local roles, default, we just did the, oh yeah, and then the uh, almost, the most visible one, I think, if you look here at the site, we've got uh, four demos, four, uh, uh, five demo content folders, all in Latin, Morbi, Purus, Etiam. Let's see how it's stored here right now, contents, Etiam metus morbi purus. That's not really the right order, I think. Let's see if we can fix that. Go back to my, no, I'll just type it in. Import content. We'll go to the import object positions in parent, browse, ordering, open, and import. And as you can see, whoop, it has already swept uh, the folder names here in the top level navigation. And now we've got the ordering that we want. So we're already quite far now with copying content from a rather old Plone 4 website to a Plone 6 website. And I haven't done really any programming or tinkering or whatever. I I just had to install the add-on in the Plone 4 site and I had to install the add-on in the Plone 6 site and export JSON and import JSON again. The only tricky part here is doing it in the right order and making sure that I create the right plone site. Under the hood, however, export import has been doing some very fancy things because this plone4 website still uses archetypes and the plone6 website is now using dexterity as most plone5152 five, uh, five five websites. So. I skipped uh, the generation a bit, but if you go to the text export website and watch again the field here, we added this, we enabled this option here, modify exported data for migrations. This will convert any found archetypes content to dexterity. Read the documentation to learn which changes are made by this option. Well, let's do that. I'm now going to the GitHub repository of collective export import. I think it's also here on the main page of the released collective export import versions. It's now 1.4. I think Philip told me last week he wanted to release a new version 1.5 uh, this week during World Plone Day. Let's go to the documentation here. And this is, for example, a lot of the magic that goes on under the hood. 
modify export data, all these fields are automatically moved from this attribute name to this attribute name. View names are converted, AT topics and collections are converted, collection criteria is still something that's been worked on, and fixed image links and scales to do actually has been done already, and let's do that right now. So after all your content has been moved, you can still do any kind of actions you want to do if you're uh, if you're able to uh, if you can develop for Plone or create uh, some views that loop over all content and fix some stuff. You can add that yourself, but there are also now some helpers in export import itself, and it's over here. This one will save for last. We're first going to fix the collection que queries. Okay, that's done. And fix links to content and images in rich text. In between Plone 4 and Plone 6, uh, some changes have been made to the HTML that uh, is stored in the rich text areas for images and links. Fix links and images, fix links, and it fixed the HTML for 22 fields in content items. So let's go back quickly and see what I just did with these fixes. Fix to content images in rich text. But I first want to show off another nice feature that has been added to Plone 6 core, the relations. When I go to the site setup and I go to the new relations control panel, where are you, where are you? Ah, here you are, relations. I can now say, I want to inspect all the related items. Inspect, and as you can see, my relations have been imported again, or when I imported the, re the related JSON, and these items now point to these items, and I can just click them, and as you can see, this item here now should have a reference, where are you? Ah, here, related content, it's, this is like this. There are indeed two related items that move to this and to this position. By default, there are two related items or relations stored in, in Plone. One is what I just uh, showed, is the related items. The other one is a bit more under the hood and is making sure that when you remove an item but other content is still pointing to it, uh, that you will get a warning like, hey, you might be breaking links for either images or for internal links in the website, which is called link integrity. I spent quite some time last year when I tried to export and import uh, those uh, link integrity relations as well, when afterwards I found out it's not necessary at all, and I think now by default uh, export import doesn't export the link integrity links anymore, because you can very easily uh, regenerate them. I'll first show you here in the site setup and relations control panel that we only have related items here. When we now go to the root of the site and we go to update link integrity information. This view is another fix and it will scan and it will automatically add back all these relations. If I now go back to the site setup control panel and go to the relations, there should be is referencing here. Inspect and there are two references here. And this is indeed the only change I made to the lorem ipsum generator text, because if I go to the welcome homepage, this is an extra image I added into the uh, homepage. And I can also now show you the other thing that the, uh, the other fixed view did for fixing the images and the links. If I go to edit and I inspect the source, This is something that needs to be data link type image and the data skill and the data value. This is something that has been added somewhere in Plone 5.1 or Plone 5.2 and was not yet available in Plone 4. If these extra data value classes are, mm, attributes, sorry, are missing with the UID of the image, then the image browser will not work. As you can see, when I now pick the image and I say insert image, I don't not inserting a new image, but I get this image already selected and I can change it. This will break if you don't fix uh, the HTML in the rich texts when you move from a Plone 4 site to a Plone 5 or higher site. Okay, and as I said, you can add, add a lot here. Also, I've now, I'm now uh, on purpose showing not, uh, not much development stuff. If you want to have, get more information on how you can 
uh, use export import to write your own custom migrations for for example custom content types or for other special things uh, you need there's a lot of documentation in the readme what you can do for example is inherit from the export content or the import content class and then add extra methods that overwrite or mm, uh, extra massage the data before it is exported and saved into the JSON or when the JSON is loaded into the new site and before it is really applied onto the item. And there are a lot of examples and other stuff in here. So the final thing, uh, if you go into the site and look again at some of the data here, these items are published but they don't have a publication date and the last modified so could also be a bit off. What's going on here? The problem is again a bit chicken and egg. If we import content, then at that time, the clone will stamp the creation date on that item. And if I later modify it by, for example, going to the import content view and, for example, apply a default page or apply something else, the modification also gets changed again. And we don't really want that. We want to have the creation date and the modification dates from the previous website. So what happens is that when you import content on each content item, there are two extra attribu attributes set, temporary attributes, that save the publication date and the creation date. And when we now go to import content, we can say as the last step, if you've done everything else, reset, created and modified dates. Then it's picking up all the temporary attributes and applying them on all the items as the very last step. And now we should have a bit, hmm, we still don't have a publication date. Here we do have, maybe, no, don't know what's going on here, but it's, uh, of course, there has to be a demo effect in every talk. Of course, I'm doing this a bit to myself because, as I told you, this is Plone 6 Alpha 4 and we're not even in beta yet. So we still have to test a lot of these tiny things and see why they don't work or if they still work. I've used a collective export import on many Plone 5.2 sites and on an earlier Plone 6 Alpha site and there it worked. So we'll have to just figure out what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Same for the portlets. I can't remember on which one. Ah, here are some portlets again. Ah, and here's my test collection. So the collection searches for some images. Let's go back here and say, where are you? Ah, here are you. Oh, but it added some extra data that's not showing here. It's showing an extra rights field very visibly in here, which can be removed. So this is a short demonstration of collective export import uh, from Plone 4 to Plone 6. Why is this important? Because there have been already quite some export migration tools and Plone has itself always had an in-place migration which is baked right into Plone. If you uh, install a newer minor version uh, of the software, then when you start up the site again, Plone will detect that the content database was created with an older Plone version and gives you a warning, hey, should we uh, upgrade the site? And also add-ons use this built-in upgrade mechanism um, that see, hey, uh, you had an add-on uh, version 2.4 installed, now version 2.6, we should run these and these upgrade steps. Can you do this? So that has always been in there in Plone uh, and has been working fairly well, but we uh, ran into a kind of complication when we had to migrate stuff from Python 2 to Python 3. The content database in Plone is uh, using a function of Python to convert the objects into uh, binary code and then convert them back again into a Python object uh, when the site starts running. And this format has changed between Python 2 and 3. So when you want to move a Plone website from <coughs> Plone 4 or Plone 5.0, Plone 5.1, Plone 5.2 that still runs on Python 2 and you want to move that to Python 3, You'll first have to uh, migrate your website to Plone 5.2 in Python 2 and then run a database conversion step. This doesn't sound too dramatic, but as we're now approaching Plone 6 and we will continue developing Plone uh, over the years, 
there's this this hard this this fixed uh, moment where you will first always have to make sure that your website and not only that but also all maybe custom code and custom extensions you've created run on both python 2 and python 3 on plone 5.2 and the other uh, uh, migration and upgrade tools of which export import uh, is one is using a different mechanism they're using extract possibly transform and then load again so there's an intermediate format which allows us to jump over this Plone 5.2 and Python 2, Python 3 issue and move straight from a Plone 4 website, as you just saw, which runs on the Python 2, to a Plone 6 website, which runs on Python 3, or maybe in four years in Python 4. Nah, won't happen, but who knows, maybe. So if you look at the text here, you see, because everything is stored in this intermediate JSON format, we can skip this step and that will make it much much easier in the years to come when you still want to convert an older Plone 4 or Plone 5 website to Plone 6 or to Plone 7. So I've concentrated now on using the classic UI website but of course Plone 6 will by default have the new Volto React enabled front end. Work is underway to have the data uh, that you import into uh, the Plone website which you can of course still massage and, and convert or, do, or uh, process later to have extra help reviews on the import content like just like we hit, uh, did here like to fix collection queries and fix links uh, the Plone Volto package in Plone 6 there's more work on the way that it will contain a method or a view to run through all the rich text in your website and convert these to uh, blocks enabled uh, uh, rich text that allows you to use the same backend data but then with the Volto front end. There's quite a bit more work to be done. If you look at the repository here, you will see issues and pull requests. We are, uh, Philip uh, will do a demonstration uh, also, I think in a world plan day talk uh, today on a, a new feature he has added support for revisions. So where you can actually see which changes were previously made on an item. And there's still work to be done. I think there's a request for also exporting and importing content rules. And as you've seen with Plone 6 Alpha 4, we still need to squash out a few bugs and test and uh, perfect everything for even smoother uh, migrations. If you want to know more about using collective export import, there were also two talks given at last year's Plone conference. And if you run into uh, issues or questions, you can also find many community members that have been using Collective Export Import on communityplone.org or on our new Discord server. That's all from me for today. Have a nice further World Plone Day, and I'll see you online or somewhere on our events. Bye!